Did I need to buy more vintage sewing patterns? Absolutely not. But when you find a quaint little shop just south of Olympia, Washington, while you're out in Seattle visiting two of your best friends, you buy an entire suitcase so you can get all the patterns home that you bought. My name is Stephanie Canada, and I've been selling sewing patterns for the better part of 12 years. And well, I figured I would go ahead and just go whole hog on this vacation. So let's go ahead and unzip this bad boy. That could sound wrong. And get looking at some vintage patterns. So did I absolutely buy a suitcase from the 1990s to go ahead and bring these home? Absolutely I did. All right, there's a lot of these, so let's get started. First up, you have McCall's 6321, which is a bust 32. Now I will say most of these are going to be on the smaller end because I've been favoring the bust 36 and up recently. It was bound to happen that I had to find an entire stash of bust 30s to 32s. So these are for you. Or for anyone who knows how to scale or PDF things. It's a fit and flare, or you have a sheath style with a slightly gathered pencil skirt. I really like the square neckline on this one where you have just like the nice thin straps, they're set wide for you. From 1962. Oh, these are my favorite type of advanced. The kind with people in them. So here, I do appreciate the color photos. I'm not here to judge on anyone's appearance, but I will say that some of these dear models look a little out of sorts, we'll put it. You'll see what I mean later. But here we have a sheath dress with a very slight sweetheart. Apparently you can do it with a ruffle or without. It is advanced 3039 in a bust 32. <sighs> yeah, there were some good ones in this one too. Don't you worry. This is a Spada pattern by Duchess of Windsor Patterns. It is a size 10. Do I know what bus size that off of hand? No, 34. The thing to know with Spada patterns is that they all had distinctly different designer measurements. So anytime you see a Spada, don't ever assume you know what the size is by the number on the packet because they are all different, every single one of them. But I like this. It's got a little surplus top with some, it looks like some slight pleating. Oh, okay. Guess the weather doesn't like slight pleating, but I do. It has a capelet and it's a sheath dress. What I find interesting is the <clears throat> distinct lack of drawing here. Like that is the lightest line drawing I think I've ever seen. Like can I can barely tell what the dress is. That's not really ideal. Let's see, does this have a, ah yes. So this one's gonna be from 61 because it has the little metered stamp on the front. So huzzah. Ah uh, yes, the good old 1940s. Don't we love them? This is Simplicity 1403. It is a bust 32, but it is a cute little blouse with a slit neckline. I like the bow from the Mandarin. That's cute. And it does come in two sleeve lengths. One of which is wholeheartedly Florida approved. The other one, not so much. Another Simplicity is going to be 4482, which is a bust 30. This is going to be a slightly drop waist, but with fitted darts along the way into a two tier skirt. You can either do it with a three quarter sleeve or a short sleeve. I personally like the little slight cut down neckline cause I feel like those high necklines choke me personally, but I know some people enjoy the higher neckline for the fit. And that one is also from the 1940s. Definitely cause it has the 15 cents on the envelope. We have jumped back into the advanced realm. This is advanced 8556. It is going to be a bust 32. It is from the 1950s. Whoever this was really liked their slit neckline. Cause you can see here, get another slit neckline. This one though, sheath dress with pockets. We love a good pocket around here. I do enjoy the lines of this one. It is very sweet. And I think this one is factory folded. Let's see. Oh, buddy boy. Yeah, that is absolutely a factory fold right there. Factory fold for those of you that don't know means that this pattern right here has literally never been touched by human hands except on the outside cover. No one has ever used this pattern. So whatever it was from the factory in 1950 something to now has never been touched. So it should be complete, should be perfectly fine. If the factory messed up, well, that's on the factory. And trust me when I say I've seen that. <coughs> uh, and now we jump into the 70s. With Butterick 6527, a bust 32 and a half, this is going to be a very high crossover bodice. I don't think technically at that point it's a surplus. I could be wrong, but either way, it's very high. So it would hit probably about here where my microphone is not going to hit that. So you don't hate me, but I like the flared out. It's not quite a bell sleeve, but it's definitely got a bit more of a flared sleeve. It does have a fitted waistband and either a midi or a maxi skirt and also factory folded probably because this feels really it feels like a tiny little book and yes indeed yet another factory fold next up we have an early 1960s advance you're looking at 2825 which is a size 10 
and at this time that would be a bust 31. This is going to be a nice little outfit where you have a cut down blouse with a dickie in the middle. You can either do short sleeve or three quarter sleeve and a pants pattern. And going back to the 1940s, you have got McCall 7243, a waist 26 straight line skirt. This is the most basic skirt that you could possibly find, but it is a good staple if you're looking to just begin your wardrobe, if you're learning just to begin to sew a vintage pattern, these are going to be some of your best that you want to get started with. Why? Because they're about three pieces and they're pretty easy to put together. And going right back to advance, we've got a 1950s advance. 8613. This is going to be yet another sheath dress. This one though has that lovely boat neck with actually you could do a little collar or not a triple button at the top and welt pockets maybe? Do we think they're fake or are they real? <laughs> wah, wah. They are fake pockets. So you can put in a welt. I mean you could then hide a pocket in there but there is no pocket given for that little welt detail right on the front. This one is a bust 34. Moving back into the 50s, we have got Simplicity 4437. It is a bust 32. We have got a straight line coat with pockets, or you can do, it looks like it might have a slight flare for version two. Both of them are short coats. It's got a shawl collar, a little tuck right at the shoulder. This would be a really nice, good staple 1950s coat. So that is really lovely. It is not factory folded. I will have to check this because it has got some lumpy bits. So it also need to be ironed. If you want to know how to iron your patterns, I did do a little short on that way back in the day. I'll link it below for you. It's really quite simple. And I believe in everyone's ability to iron their patterns should they choose. But however you choose to store your patterns is between you and whichever sewing pattern deity that you pray to when your machine starts to make that funny noise. No, God, please, no, no. Next, we have Simplicity 4970. It is a bust 32. This is a smock in two length that does have that little patch pocket there. Comes in a short or a little cuffed sleeve for the longer set if in case you actually live in colder weather, which I do not. Next, we have another spada pattern from 1956. As you can tell by the metered stamp right there. It is a size 12, which in this case is a bust 35 with a waist of 25. And this is a Joe Copeland design. I adore this jacket. Look at this crossover with that big collar on one side and then the buttons and at least the slightest little gap where the peplum is just so cute. Ah, the 1980s. What a treasure you were. So this is gonna be McCall's 8321. It is a men's size 36, which means the chest is going to be a 36 inch across. Magnum PI much? Just saying, it's right there. It's just your good standard tracksuit, tennis suit. It comes in shorts and a jacket, and you can also add the hood if you so chose. I am pretty sure I have a father, a picture of my father in similar shorts to these somewhere. No, I will not subject the internet to that, but know that these existed in my life at some point. Next up, we have Spada 455. It is going to be a circle skirt that looks like it just kind of stays open so it's like an overskirt. It does also have this contrast piece as an actual piece to the pattern. The waist for this size 10 is actually a 25 inch waist. Oh good old Patterns Pacifica and bless whoever owned these before because they wrote the date they bought it right on there so there's no guessing for me. Thanks person before me, I appreciate it. This is going to be Patterns Pacifica 4003. It is a size 10 which means it is a bust 32 and a half and from the late 70s, early 80s, because they bought it, well, 8, 680, so August 6th of 1980. Next, we have another pattern specifica. It is going to be number 3007. It's a size 6. I will say this right now. It is going to be a very small bus size, but I will look it up and I will put it on screen right now. This is also from the 80s. It was bought the same day, 8, 6, 1980, and has been apparently in the plastic ever since. 43 years of plastic. Mmm, tasty. Now we are going to step back a little bit in time to 1971, where we see Simplicity 9669. This is going to be a bus 34 to 36 from the 1970s. It is a f super fun cape moment. The pants are not included, but this is the entire cape moment, either this style or this style. Either way, a good cape, never a bad day. And now if you are anything like me and you really hate the sun, I give you another 1970s glory. Simplicity 9426, it is another bus 34 to 36, and you too can hide away from the sun just like me with that little hood. Although you'd be sweating a whole lot, so I mean, pick one. 
I do really like this hooded caftan and don't come for me. That is literally what they call it. Do I agree? No, but that's neither here nor there. It's, I think it's more like a beach jacket, especially since it is a, it does have a closure at the front. Most caftans are just like giant tents of fabric and we love them. Here we have a really lovely, potentially again, late forties, early fifties simplicity skirt, number 2223. It's got a waist of 26. The thing that I really like about it, I think should be really obvious. I really like the tie on peplum, which you don't really need a pattern for, but if you wanted the pattern, here she is. Moving on. And here we have Simplicity 1293, which is a bust 30. We are still solidly in the 1940s at this point because 15 cents. This is going to be a one piece dress and you either have the option to do one full piece or this is not a peplum. This is actually a yoke up at the top of the skirt that then is attached to this bottom section. Heading back toward the 1960s, we have got advanced 3028. It is a size 13, which at the time means that it is a bust 33. It's another good fit and flare or sheath. I like the cute little notches though up here. Although personally, I would probably really hate sewing those, but I'm sure the end product looks horridly cute because I mean, the drawing looks good, right? Does a hard side eye at the walkaway dress. And then we have another McCall's from the 1950s. This is McCall's 3643 from 1956. It is a bust 32. It's a six gore super full skirt with another thin strapped bodice, or you can do another boat neck. Definitely not back to refolded. She thick. And while most of the patterns are quite lovely and in good shape, they can't all be that way. This is Simplicity 1093. It's a bust 34. It is from the 1940s. This is a lovely blouse that we've seen time and time again, so much so that Simplicity even reproduced it, which I haven't done that line for line yet, but it's in my stack, don't you worry. Next we have Simplicity 4951. It is a bust 30. It's from the late 40s, early 50s, cause you can see here we've transitioned to 25 cents. It is a vest, straight skirt and blouse combo. I really like this vest, it's very cute. The mix and matchability of this pattern is not to be understated. Ah, and one of my favorite pajama patterns that I ever find, Simplicity 1230. This one is a bust 32. Why is it my favorite? Because you can make a tie top and shorts for your PJs. Like, come on, that's adorable. Is it practical? Absolutely not. I mean, for a bust 32, maybe if that's in your comfort zone, but for me, ha, huh? nope. There are some patterns you enjoy for the clothing. There are some patterns you enjoy for the envelope. This is Simplicity 4203. It is a bust 30. I cannot tell you how adorable I find this little dog in the corner. I, it's just, look at the, they put a bow in the doggo's hair on the pattern. I can't, it's too cute. It is a one piece dress. It does have a banded waist so that you have a little bit of contrast. Does look like you can put a facing on this. It's not really a collar, so it's just gonna flap open or you can put this. Does the embroidery come with it? That's a great question. Let me find out. Oh, well, it is there, but it's in bits. So you will have to transfer this over on your own. And I don't even know if it would be complete. That's always super hard to tell. Moving on to one of the most spectacular patterns I think I have ever laid my eyes on. And that's saying something. It is Butterick 6430. It is only designed for long hair fake fur. Y'all, please someone make this and show me what it looks like. It's a bus 36, so it's not super small, but come on, come on. I don't know who it is. I don't know if you're gonna cosplay or wear it in your real life. Either way, I don't care. It's spectacular. It's also factory folded still. I don't even have to look and I know it's complete. So please someone buy this and then show me what it looks like. Cause it's amazing. I can't make this. I'm in Florida. Someone live my best cold weather life for me. Next up is advanced 2831. It's a size 12. So this is going to be a bust 32. I found this one before. It's a lovely little gathered skirt, slit neckline with a collar dress, good staple. It does come with a short sleeve or you can leave it sleeveless, whichever way you prefer. It is not factory folded as you can see by that little this situation going on, which is why I've been holding it down the entire time. Oh boy, the 1940s were just some of the most beautiful patterns. Butterick 3750, bust 32, absolutely from the 1940s. You have got this adorable top with wide set front panel and a high neckline, a three quarter sleeve that, uh, it's actually a dolman sleeve tucked into the sides here. So it's not actually like it is a dolman sleeve. And then you also get what looks to be just a general, just baseline skirt, straight line skirt, 
five gores, so three in the back, two in the front. Probably, unfortunately, no pockets, though. Am I wrong? No, no, I'm not. All right, ooh, 1940s Hollywood realness. This is Hollywood, 1255. You are looking at a bust 30. This will come with the blouse and the pleated skirt. The pleated skirt has a front panel and then it, they do top stitch in here to do the pleats as they go along. So that way you don't have to re-pleat all the time. Does also come with a cute little bow that is removable. Okay, this is not a proper full yoke across the shoulder here. It's actually just this section is flat and then from here out is gathered in to give you some fullness at the bust. Speaking of good 1940s, we've got Simplicity 4139. From the 1940s, you've got the 15 cent right here. This one, however, is a yoked top. So you can see right here, this flat piece and the fullness that goes into it. I really like this blouse. It's very cute. If it wasn't a bust 32, I would keep it. Fun fact, my rule of keeping one pattern per box, I don't think there's one in here that I wanna keep, which is very rare. And then sometimes you just grab a pattern because it just looks cool. It's Simplicity 6048, a bust 32 keyhole dress with two main pattern pieces, which, hey, we love a good two pattern piece dress around here, but it's not my favorite thing because it's literally just a shift dress with a little keyhole cut out. So it's not like world shattering. It would be a little bit of a challenge, but I do and personally enjoy how they put the scarf through the keyhole. I think that's very 60s, very fun. Next up, we have quite the sleeved number. Simplicity 9178. It is a bust 31 and a half, but like, look, look at those sleeves. Look at that, they're just, I love a good ridiculously dramatic sleeve and that is what this is. It's quite spectacular. This is a good how to sew pattern. So if you're just kind of getting into it, this is a good 1970s pattern to kind of get you started. And it does also come with the tie-waisted pants as well, which you can, you could hack in shorts if you wanted to, but it doesn't tell you how to do it, but you could do it if you wanted to. And now we have a pattern that prior to last year, I had literally never seen before, but in the last year, I have found it three separate times. This time in a size 38. This is a men's long night shirt. And so this means your chest is going to be a size 38, but it's a really long, nice light night shirt. It does come with a collar and half buttons, sort of like the Henley style and a little chest pocket. What are you gonna put in a chest pocket while you're sleeping? Why do you have a collar when you're sleeping? I have many questions when it comes to this particular pattern, but none of them have been answered. So if you have made this and can tell me if it's actually sleepable with a collar and a pocket, Please put it in the comments below because inquiring minds want to know. And now going back solidly into the 40s, we have got Simplicity 4515. This one, however, is going to be a junior sizing, so it's a bust 29. You can get the little bolero jacket with the princess-ish lines, ish being the operative word there because I do not think that meets at all. I think it's a tuck here and a waist start. And then you've got a gathered skirt either in midi or maxi floor length length. Holy McBowtown. I love it. Here we have Simplicity 1912. We are looking at a bust 32 with a little bow tie back and a, it's not quite a square neckline because it does look like it's angling up toward the neck just a little. Now, the one thing I will say, I've had this pattern before. This ruffle piece is not a peplum. It is a separate piece of trim that you can add. So you can see here, there's not a peplum to be had. It is just ruffled trim that you are adding to this dress as you're making it. Oh my God, we're not even halfway through this suitcase yet. So many patterns. Next we have advanced 4828. Oh, wait a minute. There were two of these. Where'd the other one go? A few moments later. Oh my God, you're over here. Next we have advanced 4828. And why have one when you can have two? <laughs> This is going to be a 1940s pattern that I thankfully have in a bust 32 and a bust 34. It's just a nice gentle swing coat, comes in two lengths, does have pockets on the front, and I personally enjoy the sass of the popped up collar. That is quite spectacular. Moving in to get another pattern that I'm questionable if it's complete. We're looking at Simplicity 2311. It is a bust 32. It's a very simple blouse though. So maybe it's not incomplete. It just only has like five pieces. Maybe that's what I'm feeling feeling. Oh, hiccups killing me. I do really like just the simplicity of this. You can either do it with a rounded collar or basically a pointed Peter Pan collar or no collar. Ain't it grand? Next, we have an interesting little number here. Looking at Butterick 8124, a bust 34 from the 1950s. I like it. I don't know how functional this little capelet would be, but I do like it. 
It's very cute. I do enjoy though. Look at this back of this skirt, how the how it's sort of raised up off of there. I'd be interesting to see someone actually make this to see the construction to see if it actually calls for you to not connect anything but the bottom of this trim so that it keeps that raised look along the back. It's a very intriguing little pattern. I like it. Next we have, mm, pretty sure this is late 40s, early 50s butter because we're at 50 cents, but we haven't transitioned to the square yet, which is like solidly 1950s. This is a bust 32, which is going to be this jacket and skirt combo. I like, again, the fact that the pockets stand away from the skirt. I just find that interesting. I also like that it's a suspender skirt. Suspender skirt, suspender skirt. Why is that so hard to say? Oh, and then we just have pretty, pretty things. Simplicity 2066 is a bust 34. I adore this pattern. I will never make this pattern, but it is beautiful. I love the raised princess lines into like a pointed empire waist with a little, like, look, check that out. Come on now. You cannot tell me that that is not like the epitome of collar. And I do love how this back panel actually gathers into these pleats along the back to make the train extra vol voluminous. It's just a glorious 1950s pattern. And even if you were a bridesmaid, I mean, that's not the worst bridesmaid that I've ever seen. So not a bad choice, Simplicity 2066. Not bad at all. Next up, we have an advanced jacket from the 1950s. You're looking at advanced 9011. It is a size 10. The bust is a 31 inch on this. It is factory folded, I'm pretty sure, just by how nicely the packet is together. It's just a good, solid 1950s jacket. You can do three buttons. It's a single breasted. You got some patch pockets and a little like breast pocket for your little handkerchief decor. Next, we have the most gorgeous Simplicity sheath dress. I adore Simplicity 2153. It's a bust 34. I love this deep V neckline. That is my absolute favorite neckline to see. It's just beautiful. Now, I understand the scarf is not part of it, but you could make it a part of it. Like add a little scarfy detail there on the side. So it comes with a sheath dress in three different necklines. And it does also come with a cummerbund belt ruched moment as well. Like I said, they can't all be in perfect shape. This is Butterick 3718. It is a bust 32. Thankfully the size is still there. Otherwise we would be hurting because this is an unprinted pattern for a beach slash sport coat. I love the flair of it all. And also, if you look really closely, you can tell that the artist tried to indicate that one of these was in like a terry cloth by adding these little dots. I think that detail is really quite spectacular. The other detail I really enjoy is this set in sleeve moment that comes in at a point and back out. Would it be less of a pain to attach as a sleeve? I don't know. I've never found one close to my size to try. And we're going to jump right back into that late 50s, early 60s sheath moment. This is Simplicity 3436. You're looking at a bust 32 for this sheath dress. It does have a square neckline or a boat neckline up through here. None of those are pockets. It's just detail. So up to you if you put those on. I think it's interesting. Interesting. But I can't tell if it's interesting in a good or a bad way. I'll leave that up to you. And now we have a classic 1950s maternity moment. Simplicity 1472. It is a lovely pleated front like tent blouse situation. Basically just to like cover your body without giving you any type of semblance of anyone knowing you're pregnant. I don't fully get it. That's what you get when you get that. But either way, I, I will say it does look nice and light and airy, which in the summer months whilst you are pregnant is spectacularly important. I do believe also that Serena might have made this one. This is going to be late 50s, early 60s. If it is, I will ask her if I can put an image here. My friend Serena actually made two other blouses that were very similar, but not the one that I found in this haul. She just really enjoyed these, and then she transitioned this into like a gardening smock for like lots of room and airflow. 10 out of 10 would recommend that. But this one is a bus 30, so she is on the wee side. The hood in this one. I just... Simplicity 3165, a bus 34. It's a nice little blouse all the way around, but I mean, you're gonna... You're buying it for the hood. You're buying it for the hood. What is that? It's like a double, it's almost like a hair cover while you were going in a convertible to try and keep your hair set from wiggling around too much. Now it is not factory folded, so I have no idea even if it is complete, but I mean, that's, that's one heck of a hood. And now we have another rad 1960s simplicity, except this one is going to be for a set of vests. 
And honestly, if you're gonna wear a vest, this is one of the ones that I would choose. Cause like, look, look at some of these, like the scallops, the long with the fake fur, the, it just, it's pretty spectacular. Simplicity 81, 43, and a bus 36 has lots of different vest options. And I do really enjoy all the choices it gives you. Speaking of wacky hoods. <coughs> Simplicity 9500. No, you're not seeing that wrong. That, that is actually happening right now. So what you're seeing here is actually just a Jiffy dress that's designed for knits. So good to know that. That's not a hood. It's literally a cowl, like a turtleneck that has so much fabric, they designed it to go up over your head. <laughs> and it even says so right here, hooded dress. But they're, they're no hood. Look at that. Look at that ridiculousness. That's like half the body length in a friggin' turtleneck. <laughs> I love this one. Pretty sure actually this one might be factory folded. So hopefully someone can make that and entertain me. If you're a bus 32 and a half and you want that pattern, come on over to my website. That's where they're all going to be. Enough of the ridiculous hoods for the moment because now we're back to 1940s Butterick realness. This is Butterick 3686. It is a bust 30 from the 1940s. She really did enjoy these accent panels in the front and then the side bodices being all in one sleeves with a gathered skirt. Oh, it's even got like a little yoke back as well down here. And for a time that was all about shoulder pads, I really enjoy the fact that they call out. They're like, nope, not this one. This one's a rounded shoulder, friends. Even though it still has shoulder pads. <laughs> like, pick one. And not everything can be a stunner. Not everything can be a winner. But there are, can be lots of really good solid staple patterns in your collection. And my own, not this one because it's a bust 34. This is Simplicity 49.99. It is a bust 34. It's just a really good solid set of summer tops from the late 50s, early 60s. This would just be a spectacular addition just for like a basic blouse, just to a fallback go to because you've got a boat neckline and you've got a square neckline. It's going to sit a little bit higher. So if you're, you know, if you're like me and your money want a little bit lower, you just have to you fold it over just a little bit when you're making it. And in case you thought we were done with the fake fur patterns, we're not. Simplicity 9634 in a bus 36. Absolutely number two and three are designed for fake fur only because why not? But I really enjoy them. And you know, if you're gonna do a fake fur moment, you should have a pattern that's designed for that. So here's a second one. And now we're gonna jump back into the 1950s with McCall's 5669. We are looking at a bust 32, uh, just a really good solid fit and flare, nice scoop neckline. You've got one dart at the waist, really nice and long. You've got one dart at the bust and a softly pleated skirt and a single button bolero jacket pattern as well. And sometimes the previous owner said, off with their head. This is going to be a wedding dress. It is advance. This is advanced 3150. Again, this is going to be late fifties, early sixties. I will find a better image. I will put it here if I can find it. It is this like fitted waist with a rounded neckline, or you can see on the back a little bit, like how it's a little bit higher. There's also a jacket, but someone definitely at some point said off with their head. And so they did. And staying with advance, but heading backwards in time, we are looking at advance 3266, which is a bust 32. This is from the 1940s. It's a high neckline blouse with a little gather up through here and a little tie, or you can do the Peter Pan collar yoked version with the patch pocket. I wish this was another wacky hooded pattern. It's not. It looks like it is, but it is not. You must look carefully because it says here, pants, shorts, little tie ankle versions, but they're just for the shorts, the pants, and the other version of the pants. As much as I would like to say that it also comes with the blouses, that is not correct. Please do not think that you're going to get this wacky hooded thing with these because you're not. It's just the pants. Back to our little friend, the inset sleeve moment. We're looking at Simplicity's 46.99 with a bust 32. It again has that super high collar that she really liked on some of these, a single button up at the top into the slit neck. This is basically every pattern that she liked all into one. So it's got the slit neckline. It's got a little button. It's got a collar. It's got the inset pointy sleeve situation, but it is going to be that sheath dress. And it of course has the scarf that makes you think there's something else on the side when there's actually not. Uh, and this advance I have had quite a few times and it is a lovely pattern all around. Advanced 3964, it is a bust 36. It's a two piece suit 
with princess lines that go all the way down into a single button. These little welts, ooh, I don't remember, are they pockets or not? Bullshit, that's not a pocket. So while they say that this pocket lap is a pocket, the pocket is like that wide. Uh, so you would want to make a bigger pocket because that's wild. What are you going to fit in there? A flower? Either way, I do enjoy the overall of this. It's a good solid 1940s if you're going for like a good basic suit for the mid 40s. This is going to be a good option for you. Then we have advanced 9920 with a waist 24. It says one yard skirt from 54 inch fabric. While the one yard skirt back in the 40s was typically from 36 or 39 yard fabric, as we go up in the ages, they have to stress where the one yard can actually fit. So in this case, they're saying that the one yard skirt is only from 54 inch fabric or higher, but it's just a good pencil skirt. It does look like it has some accents right through here, which hopefully is a better pocket than the last one. Ah, oh, yes, much, much more real pocket sized. Excellent. And now from the 1950s, we have Advance 8808, which is a size 12, a bus 32, which it does have this bolero with a pretty spectacularly epic collar. Like that is a collar. And it also comes with a sheet dress. It does look like the dress actually has some slight gathers up here. So you would have a little bit more room to move, but I do really enjoy everything about this. I mean, it's honestly, it's all about the bolero and this one for me. I love a good collar moment. And I do believe this is the only New York pattern in the entire box. This is New York 1362. This is probably the late 30s, early 40s. It is another men's two-piece pajama. You're looking at a chest 36 to 38. And why I like New York patterns is for me personally, they tend to fit me a little bit easier than some of the other patterns that I've tried. But yes, this one has a high mandarin collar or a fold out notched collar as well buttons down the center. You can also do a collarless version or a V-neck. So I do appreciate the variety of collars that this particular pattern provides. Who needs a walkaway dress? When you have a, a easy wrap around apron, which is basically what the walkaway dress is. Ah, did I say that? This is a bust 30 from the 1970s. The only concern that I have is um, we're, we're using it as an outdoor thing. Cause I don't know about you, but when I go cooking things, I certainly wear a shirt underneath. Maybe that's just me, but I do enjoy some of like, you can see the calico prints and the plaids from the time on the front, pretty cute. And it does come in two links. Staying in the 1970s, we have got Butterick 6083. This is going to be a bus 31 from the 1970s. It is exclusively for knits. So you do wanna make sure that you're only using it for a knit pattern, but it does come with all of these. And I will double check to make sure they're there. All these little like applique, like lightning bolt, butterfly, heart and, star like i don't i like the butterfly placement the best like i'm not i don't need a brand on my chest i'm not actually a superhero i just find vintage patterns but yes you can do it in two links and it also does come with the pants pattern staying in the 1970s we're looking at butter at 6546 this is another bus 31 and a half it's a little wrap ish like it's basically just a crossover front that ties it does come with a little shorty skirt and the shorts to go along with it but you can also do the long pants version as well. And more Butterick, this time from the 1950s. And this is Butterick 7245. It is going to be a bus size 30. This is a straight line jacket and a very fitted front waist dress. You can see here, instead of one dart, they actually split it into a two dart situation and one dart up at the shoulders, as opposed to the standard side bus dart. And it does look to be an all-in-one. They're calling it a quick and easy because you can see down here that it's just going to be one big old piece that you just have to make a whole lot of darts in. Personally, I'm not as big a fan of those, but that's because the thing I'm currently wearing attempted to do the same thing. And well, we all know how that went. Also from the 1950s, we are looking at Butterick 7101. This is going to be a bus size 30 and it does have her favorite notched neckline, little bit of a collar moment, and of course, the little like inset sleeve minute. And apparently along the back here, that little collar moment is actually like a tiny little sailor collar. So you could actually like, if you want a bigger sailor collar moment, you could just widen it out a little. But I really enjoy that little collar detail. And now we get some mail orders, which when you find a mail order pattern, this information right here, that's what you're looking for. That will tell you what number and supposed size you are looking for inside. Will it line up? That's a whole other ballpark, friends. But you know, in this case, it did. This is going to be a bolero jacket and straight line skirt in a size 14, which means it's a bus 32 for this time frame. 
I really like how they're popping this collar. I don't know what it is about the popped collar thing. It just works for me. Do I like the 1980s versions? Absolutely not. Do I like the 2000s versions? Absolutely not. Do I like it in the 1940s and 1950s? For some unexplicable reason, yes. I don't get it either. But I really enjoy this pattern and I also enjoy the fact that factory folded. And if you're ever concerned that your pattern is not the same as what is on the envelope, you want to look for this stamp right here. And if you, it's very faint, but you can see 248514, which means that is your pattern number and your size, the same as on the envelope, as on the packet, as on the tissue. So there you go. Now you know. Now, when I tell you this next pattern had me inextricably excited. Y'all, I was doing a little dance in the back room. I was so excited because this, this, my friends, what did I just tell you? Look on the front cover for the number and the size. What do you see right here? 9086. 48! I was so excited. I was so excited. It's also dated from 1939. I was so excited. And that's why we always check the inside because that ain't that. Now, I'm. this is still very cute, but it just, it is not what was on the envelope. This is Marion Martin 9290 in a size eight, not 48. It's a cute little girl's crossover front that does have buttons and bloomers available. It's very cute, it just wasn't what I wanted. That would have been the pattern I would have kept, but oh well. And now in honor of time, we're gonna do two skirts at once. Why? Because they're really similar to each other. You've got Vogue. 8073, and you've also got Vogue 7126. 8073 is a waist 24. They're both this slimline skirt. 8073 has a slightly raised waistline with the darts that tuck it in and give it that shape. Whereas 7126 is a waist 26, and it's just a general straight line skirt, but it does have these little pleats right here to help give it a little bit of extra structure. Sticking with our Vogues, we are going to be looking at Vogue 6644. It's very fluffy and feels very light, so I'm, un I'm dubious that the instructions are in here. It's a very cute double-breasted vest and it is a bust 30. I adore this neckline. If this was a little bit bigger, I'd probably keep it and figure out how to make it for me, but from a bust 30 to a bust 48, 49, mm -mm, nope, that's, that's skills that I don't have. Next, we have 1950s Advanced 8182. It is a size 14, so it's a bust 34. You get this blouse with the sort of pointed collar out to the side. You get a jacket with, it's not quite a raglan sleeve. It's also not quite a dolman sleeve because it doesn't go up to the top. It also doesn't fully connect down. It's just an interesting sleeve style. And it does also have these little details right here at the pockets in the slimline skirt. Another maternity pattern is going to be Advance 2779. It's a size 24, so it'll be a waist 24. It does have pockets, and you also have this option to create the little scoop out, so that way as your belly grows, you can tie the skirt and it can grow with you. Ain't it grand? And another glorious suspender skirt. This is Advance 2952, a waist 24, bust of 28. They give you the bust measurement because you also get the bolero jacket to go with it. I just really enjoy this style of skirt. It would look absolutely ridiculous on me, but it's just really cute for those that it does work for. And it's got some nice little inverted pleats as it goes down, so you do actually have room to move. Next is Simplicity 3208. This is going to be a bust 32 from the late 50s, early 60s. We're sitting at a 50 cent here, so probably still in the late 50s. Just a really cute house coat and pants. And it is not a wrap style because these flaps of fabric here, they just attach at the sides of a structured bodice. There's no wrapping involved for this at all. Next up is Simplicity 2269. This is again going to be from the late 1950s. It is a little jacket or stole pattern in a bust 32. Now, while this one does not explicitly say like the 1970s one where it's fake fur only, thankfully that probably means you can make it from things other than fake fur since they show it right there. Oh, here we go. There they are. There they are. <laughs> these ridiculous things. And remember that time that I told you that the advanced models, when they did these live color shoots, tended to look either like they were distracted or they were doing something else, or they were just like thinking about other things at the time. This is what I meant. This is advanced 3098. And believe it or not, she's not the worst of the bunch. She's fine. The woman in the photo is fine. It's just... I don't know what's happening here, but it distracts me from the dress, which is not helpful because you need to see what the dress is so that you can actually know what you're making. Uh, but her expression 
full on Adam's Family values. That's literally all I have to say about that. My birthday. I was 10. When you go down to the drawings and you see what's actually there, I do enjoy it. It's a high neckline. It does have some trim along here and a slim length skirt, but man, that's distracting. Give me a kiss. Give me a 20. Now for advanced 3052, she's got it a little bit more together. She's looking at the camera. I feel engaged. I feel like she's showing me the dress, not distracting from the dress. So this is going to be a stole and sheath dress pattern with a sweetheart neckline in a bust 32 from the late 50s, early 60s before advanced went out of business. And like, it's a nice dress. I also enjoy, especially in this one, I really like the fabric choice because now I can see fabric from the era too. So these two things, I like this version a lot better, but oh, we're not done yet. I'm saving the best one of these for the bottom of this stack. But next we have advanced 3157 which is sort of like a Western inspired outfit. So you have the pants, you've got the A-line skirt and then a yoked blouse, which that is an intriguing choice of fabrics. She's perfectly fine. She looks cool, comfortable, breezy, not a problem. Now, when I tell you that they were distracted, I mean it. Don't know what they're distracted by. I think she's trying to look at her friend and be like, Barbara, look at the camera. But she's not getting the message because Barbara is somewhere else. Now. She, this is a maternity shoot, right? So if they're actually pregnant, she's probably in a whole other space for different reasons. But no, we should have done a reshoot here, Advance. This is Advance 3110. It is a bust 31. It's just a button up blouse. It just like kind of like a tent blouse to kind of float away from the hips and where the baby is being created. But man, Barbara's screwing up the whole, Barbara! Moving back in the 1950s, we are looking at McCall's 3365 in a bust 32. It's what they call a coat or a topper, basically a short or a long coat. I do enjoy the fact that there are pockets here on the side seams and it's just, uh, I wish it was close to my size. And I also wish I didn't live in Florida so I could wear it. Well, ponchos and pants to you too. This is McCall's 9782. I don't know what I was doing there. This is a bust 32 and a half. It's a poncho set that either comes in a rounded poncho or a pointed. And you also do have the pants set to go along with it. And it's from 1969. <laughs> what was I doing? Ponchos and pants. Now for anyone who says that McCall's didn't print their dates on their patterns, I call a bluff. It just so happens that occasionally they would print them on the envelope flaps and guess what gets torn away very frequently? The envelope flap. That's right. Very good. You figured it out. This is a McCall pattern from 1939. It's a girl's dress with lots of pretty pleats, a flat yoke, a Peter Pan collar, and two sleeve lengths in a size 10. It's super sweet. I also enjoy that the back has a vent so that the, when the kids are moving, they're not popping all the stitches that you work so hard to put in there for them. Then heading back into the 50s with McCall's. 3219 and a bust 32. This is going to be another sheath dress with a slim strap. Do we see a trend here? Yes, we all do. I'm so glad you're paying attention. That's the thing, like you find a certain style and you go with it. Can I tell you how many numbers of patterns that I have that look the exact same? No, I won't tell you because it's embarrassing. It also has a straight jacket. And while it doesn't have any pockets, at least does give you a little bit of air in the back to be able to move. And while I do enjoy Butterick 7781 and a bust 32, I can see along the bottom here, there's a little bit of moisture. And then when I turn it over, there's a lot of bit of moisture. So I will set this one aside. Unfortunately, this will not go on my website just because I don't want it to get anyone sick. Now moving on to McCall's. 59.53 and a bus 32. This is going to be a good standard shirt waist dress with a gathered skirt. And you have either a cuffed sleeve or regular sleeve. It's just a nice, easy dress. This is like baseline late 50s, early 60s. You can put it in either era because it existed in both eras. And now in the realms of if you're looking to make yourself a period appropriate skirt, but you don't want just the normal straight line skirt, you can aim for McCall 7836. This is a waist 26. The reason why I say it's not completely normal is because all the darting is on the outside. And there's a little fly front through here that's been stitched down as well as the champion of pockets because we love a good pocket. Yeah. Didn't we just have this? I have two. <laughs> okay, well, apparently 3219, there's two of these available. So there you go. All right, let's go back to the Vogue in the 1970s. We're looking at Vogue 8285 with a bust of 36. 
And I will say, this is a very cute high crossover with the Mandarin collar, patch pockets with the extra flap, even though they don't... Oh, that's intriguing. I definitely thought the pockets would close with the flaps over it, not have her put her hand into it and have it just be a detail on the front. Intriguing. Slight belled out sleeve, and it does look like the pants are available as well. And this does feel factory folded, so huzzah. Ah, but we aren't done with the crazy hooded patterns yet, my friends. Butterick 6183 in a bust 31 and a half. This is another cover-up pattern. It's going to be a zip front. But I mean, yep, there it is. That glorious hooded beach cover-up shenanigans. I, you know, I do really enjoy it overall. And I do think you can actually view E here. You can see it, there is a version without the collar, without the hood as well. But, you know, if you got a good hooded pattern from the 70s, you should absolutely use the hood. And speaking of hoods, we have got McCall's 2885 from the 1970s. It is going to be a bust 32, even though it is the junior sizing of a size 9. Just means that the proportions are going to be slightly shorter from neck to waist and waist down. And it does also come with the tunic version without the hood or the pants as well. But I do just have to say, whoever this artist was did a spectacular job of sort of combining the essence of the 1970s with the drawings that they were hired to do because that is a very evocative drawing and I do have to give them a 10 out of 10 on their work. I still don't want to make 70s patterns, but it's pretty. And then we have a McCall Junior dress from 1946. This is McCall 6371. It does have these little pockets with the cutest little bow details. It also does have a keyhole neckline, which um, I'm a little concerned because the drawing on the front has a drawing over top of it. So uh, the previous owner could have cut into it. Don't know yet, we'll check. Next we have McCall's 3463. You're looking at a bus 32 through here. It has got double princess seams at the waist all the way down. Hopefully that's a pocket. Ah, yes, it is. We love a good pocket. Excellent. But yeah, this one just has a lot of really nice contrasting features throughout here, which I do find very lovely. Speaking of bus 32s, we're looking at McCall's 6004. This is what we call an easy mark pattern. Oh. So it's a multi-transfer pattern. So I actually haven't seen one of these that's done the entire pattern. Uh, I will double check and see if it's even usable at this point because sometimes that means that if it got any water damage or any moisture at all, you won't be able to transfer it. You could still cut it out, obviously. So it's not a completely useless pattern, but it's just not what it says on the envelope. So uh, keep that in mind. This is from the 1950s. It's a good sheath, a little bit of a gather up through here. It's basically like, oh, <laughs> it even says on the envelope if I would have read, no, this can be used as a regular pattern. Excellent. So glad we had that chat. And maybe you don't want a 1940s skirt, maybe like a 1950s basic line skirt. You wanna look for McCall's 3410. This is gonna be a waist 26. This is another good, just standard pencil skirt. It does have a fly front. It Either the buttons are functional or just decorative. I would probably make them decorative personally. I don't need buttons on my pockets. That's annoying. It does have a slight kick pleat at the back for good movement. Overall, nice, good, solid pattern. Now we have some of the most interesting sleepwear that I have seen in quite some time. McCall's 4544 is going to be a bust 32. It's been, I don't think I've ever seen actually, out in the 1950s, sleepwear that looks like this. I think it's cute and very practical for just like, if you're just going for sleepwear, although this band thing I think would ride up too much middle of the night, so I would want that version, but that's just me. It does also come with a little set of panties. Now we have McCall's 5055. And this one is just one of those patterns that you just find. It's a good basic, we love it. This one is a bust 32. It's a good sheath dress. It does have a little bow at the accent, at the waist, long sleeve or short sleeve. Now, before I get into the uh, larger than I planned for a stack of really good patterns at the very end, we have to do the oversized patterns. These honkers, all these. So we're gonna start with a brand that I actually haven't seen before. So this is called the Vogue French Boutique, which I have not seen one of these before. So I always find those to be interesting when I find a new like off branch of a company that I definitely know mixed in with a, you know, a whole entire label that I've never seen. This is by Christian Aujard. Aujard? Aujard. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm probably really, I'm probably butchering that. I really apologize. And it's a size 10, so it's a 32 and a half. It comes with the jacket, the blouse, and the pants. Um, I will double check because it does look, a touch on the, it looks like it got wet somewhere along the way on the 
flat, but this just looks like discoloration. I'll double check this before I put it anywhere near the website, but that is that one. This is a Vogue Paris original. Christian Dior number 1569. Let Look at the flow on this. The flow on this pattern. This is what you need by a live model. You need somebody that's like in action, showing the clothes without distracting from the look, which I think is why those advanced ones were just so awkward. So this is a size 14. It's a bust 36. And it does come with the stole and this dress. So the stole is what's wrapped up around her and the dress is this one shoulder moment. Absolutely spectacular. Okay, this one is Yves Saint Laurent. This is Vogue Paris original, 1738. It comes with the coat and the dress, which of course the coat has a good hood. She had a, she had a thing friends and she went hard for that thing. It is a size 16, which is going to be a bust 38. And I do think yeah, pretty sure that looks like a factory fold to me. I'll double check, but we love that. Okay, and this one is just the stinking cutest. This is Vogue 1642 by Yves Saint Laurent, once again. Again, I want to say like 1970s, 1980s, somewhere in that time frame. But look at the top. Like, if that is not as close to a, like, gunny sacks ish dress that I've ever found, the way that that is tied open, the corset lace top, absolutely reads gunny sacks but like they were trying to update it i do really enjoy this pattern it does have a little bit of nibbles here on the bottom but they did not transfer through to the packet on the inside so that's the important part it's a size 14 so it's a bust 36. now we've jumped over to an Vogue american designer this is again from that 70s 80s cusp this is a jerry silverman i actually think this might be a wrap dress no, it is not. It's a pullover dress with a surplus bottoms. So you got through here. I really actually like this neckline quite a lot. Very pretty. And it does come with a shawl pattern as well. And it is a size 12, so it's a bust 34. And next we have another 80s moment from Christian Dior. It is a Vogue Paris original. This is a very nice square neckline. It looks like more of a blousey top, but then they opted to do all these little pleats down at the front of the skirt. It's an interesting choice. It's Christian Dior, it's number 1447, and it's a size 14, so it's a bust 36. And it does come with this shawl, the dress, and the belt. Now, men, I didn't just find pajamas for you. Look at this thing. Look at how cool this is. Men's Knit Safari Jacket by McDuff. Again, with the like, the rugged exterior. We dig the moment. It is MR201. I've never heard of McDuff, so that's new to me. Size is 38 to 40, so your chest across is gonna be 38 to 40. But look at this, like look at this 70s moment with those, like the pointed pockets and the belt and the hopefully bell bottoms, I don't know. Oh no, okay, so it's just for the jacket. Just the jacket by itself, so you will have to provide ye olde pants on your own. But that's, that's pretty friggin' cool. And it is still, I think, sealed? Yeah, that's still sealed, so. This has never been used. Now we're gonna get into the slightly older large formats. So here we have a probably much more solidly 1970s Vogue Paris original. You're looking at Givenchy, number 1134. This is going to be for a very full gathered skirt. Look at those pants though. Like those are palazzo pants, love it. And the blouse with the low drop bow, very 70s. But also look at this like jacket moment here with some type of very large sleeves, some gathers, like it's just, it's very voluminous outfit. And it is a size 12, so that means it's a bust 34. We're looking at Vogue Paris Original by Christian Dior, number 1660. This is just a very deep V line, either uh, midi dress or full length threat with a very deep slit. And this one is a size 12. And I don't know who got this for 50 cents, but good on you, because it wasn't me. And now we have, this is falling back into the 1960s, Vogue Paris original, 1255 by Nina Ricci. It is a very structured suit, very Jackie O-esque. Lots of detailed stitching at the bottom of this view. It's just really lovely overall. And it comes with the jacket, the blouse, and the pencil skirt. And it is a bus 32. Now we have a Vogue basic design, which is number 1925. This is going to be for all of these yoked dresses views. I really, actually, I really like one. That print is fantastic. But I do really like the dress overall. It looks a bit more shifty. Like the only thing that really makes it different is this yoke, but it's a Vogue basic. That's what it's supposed to be. Nice part is, it was a bus 34. And now the best one that was in there. 
this one. This is going to be a 1960s Christian Dior number 2175. Look at that sleeve. Just take a moment and just take it in because that is absolute chef's kiss. I could do without just like the shift dress feel of the rest of it, but I understand what they're going for. You pick one design thing and make that exaggerated and then the rest just needs to be normal. But like that is quite epic. And this one is a bust 36. And now if you have managed to make it this far, congratulations, because this is a long video but you've made it to the best patterns that I found. Because while the rest of these are fantastic, this stack right here, the last stack also, to be clear, this, these are the best ones. So we're gonna start out with McCall's 4666, which is a bust 32. It's a sheath dress and bolero, but the bolero is this bow moment thing through here. So like just a nice sheath dress, sweetheart neckline, thin straps, no big deal but it's this moment here. You can see here where it's a sh very cropped bolero in the back. And you can see the front, how it kind of curves in and then the bow and just everything about that bolero is absolutely spectacular. And of course we cannot go anywhere without our matching gloves and scarf. And this is McCall's 2040. It's a medium, so it's going by hand size. So it's gonna say six and a half to six and three quarters. But yes, it is a Primarily a glove pattern. You can make any of these or you can make the long style. It also does come with that scarf pattern as well, but it's not one size. So you do actually have to know how to figure out what glove size you are and use this little diagram for assistance. And then we have the most 1959 turban ever. McCall's 2341 is a head size of 23 inches, which, ooh, maybe I will keep this and actually make this. But I would never make that because I would never wear that. But this one, I might try and make one. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. This is from 1959. And those bubble dresses, those bubble skirts, they're always so fun. And I found one. It's McCall's 5234. It is a bust 32 with a pretty nice, just like princess line jacket. It's, there's no collar per se. Then you have a fit and bubble. My bubble. Skirt where there's like a higher neckline almost it's not really a scoop. It's not really a boat neck. We'll call it a jewel neckline. That's probably about as close as that's gonna get. And then you have this bubble accent with the like slim skirt underneath holding it for dear life. I just, I always find these entertaining. This is from the 1950s. And then we have a proper evening gown from the 1950s. It is McCall's 4425. It is also a bust 32, but look at this sheath. You can either do it with or without straps. Just look how it flows into this draped bow moment through here. And you can either do the evening length or the midi length. Uh, it's just spectacular. It, I think it's a beautiful pattern. And now we have Vogue S4801. This is a bust 32. And this is, the dress itself is a pretty standard dress, right? So like it's a pretty standard sheath dress. You've got a double dart along the waist scoop neckline, short sleeves, nothing terribly exciting. But look at this jacket stole thing. That's where the detail gets in. Cause it's like, it's a stole. Cause you can see back through here, it's very drapey, but it has that notched collar and the top stitching. And also just the flow of the drawing makes it feel, I mean, potentially more exciting than it actually would be made up, but I don't know, I've never seen it made up. So if you want to take that on, please do. Speaking of exciting Vogues, we have Vogue 6172 which is a spectacular coat. It's a double breasted coat with a back yoke and you can also do the hooded option as well. And while it is a size small, so the bus is only 30 to 32, I would like to say it's easy to size up, but then I looked at the number of pattern pieces and at least for my ability, definitely not. I know there are way more talented people out there than me that do the sizing thing, but if I could keep this, I would, but I, I am not, not that talented. And then we go into this adorable 1940s Butterick, which is number 3245. It's a bust 32. And these two are quite lovely. They're good staples, but then you come down to view C and whoa, ma'am, spectacular. I really do enjoy everything about this. It obviously is not factory folded, so I will have to look at it and see what state it is currently in. Moving on to the 1950s Vogue moment. That is this, it's not, one of them's a shawl, okay? Yep, shawl, great, love that. Other one, holy swizzles, what is that? So this is Vogue 9428. It is a size medium, so it's a bust 34 to 36, but look at that, look at that, look at that, I love it. It's so cute. Again, I don't really go do fancy things like that, but that if you do fancy things, do the fancy thing in that, that is adorable. 
And then there's this coat pattern. Vogue 9823. It's a bust 32. It is beautiful. It's gigantic and I love it. I can't keep it because it's too small. But look, look at, look, look at that. Look at that. Uh, it's what I envisioned for super fancy outings for like, if you're going to the Metropolitan Opera in the 1950s, that's what you're wearing. So it pulls a special little string in my heart for that amount of like drama of a coat. And this is it, final two. And of course I'm saving one of the absolute best for last. Mary and Martin, 9227, size 14, factory folded. Because that, if that does not read Marilyn Monroe, I don't know what else does. It is from 1956. They saved the little scrap from the actual envelope, even though they didn't save the envelope. But yes, it is definitely a bus 32, but it is spectacular. And then we have the piece de resistance, my favorite one I found and the one that I'm hoping is something I can do a follow-up video on. Simplicity 1517. Now, I am going to look and I am going to figure out if this is the pattern that Simplicity reproduced already and if this is, I will finally be able to do that video where I can do the panty and bra, like a period appropriate, does it, you know, vintage versus reproduction. This, I'm hoping this is the pattern. Editing Stephanie, did I do it? <sighs> and the hunt continues. Either way, we love ourselves a good NRA moment. We love a good Simplicity 1517 in a bus 32. It is spectacular. So it's got the panties or the tap shorts as well as the bralette through the top there. I call it a bralette just because there's no wires involved and that's just what I call those. It's probably just bra and panties on the back. Nope, my bad. They call it a bandeau still at that point. But it is a really spectacular fat pattern. It obviously has been used, but that is not gonna stop me Oh, I just realized, look at this. You could make it so it runs all the way down so that you could do your du super duper back dresses. Oh, that's cool. And on second thought, I don't think this pattern is really for me. So I will be adding this to the stack of patterns to be sold. And if you are looking to buy any of these patterns that I have shown you today, you want to head to backroomfinds.com, which is my own personal website right here. Editing Stephanie just popping in to say that video Stephanie got really excited and forgot that this video was going to take forever to edit. So I do have about 30 patterns up now and the rest will be trickling in over the weekend. So keep checking back. And now back to your scheduled video. And if somehow you have actually made it this far throughout the video, I would like you to go down and comment saucy before the rest of your comment, whatever you choose, you know, saucy patterns, saucy, you know, bra, whatever. don't get yourself censored, but you know, Pick a powder and say saucy, and I'll know you made it to the end of the video. No, I can't wink. If you did enjoy this video, I would really love it if you wouldn't mind subscribing as well. I would love to grow this little community. Stretch goal would be 30,000 by the end of the year. I realize that's a little hopeful, but if you wouldn't mind and you do enjoy this type of content, please do feel like giving it a subscribe, pushing the like on your way out. And in case you haven't seen this video where I found a whole box full of plus size patterns, and YouTube thinks you'll like that one right there. I hope y'all have an absolutely fabulous day and so in chaos, friends. Bye. Oh, that's so heavy. It's gonna be a long ass video.